Thank you very much, Riv. I want to welcome Zion's partner, Dignitas. And what a good way to start the Dignitas week. The Barons were interesting for you guys. Yeah, the first game I get interviewed, we just happened to throw a Baron. I guess that's got to happen at least once when you're on Team Dignitas. So I'm glad we got that out of the way. Hopefully it doesn't happen again. <laughs> yeah. You're done for the season? Yeah, that's, that's, that's my Baron throwing for the season. You don't want to quote me on that, though, because I'm pretty <laughs> sure I'm going to regret saying those words. I mean, the interesting thing is, you guys still did win the game. That's the benefit. You stayed positive. You were able to win through the game. I mean, what was actually happening as far as the miscommunications at those Baron fights? Um, a lot of the miscommunication is just that we weren't... We had good ward coverage, but we weren't being adamant enough about our picks and what we wanted to do. For example, like one of the Barons where they got the Baron, we weren't sure on whether we wanted me to TP or not. And then the call was for me to not TP, like the team established that. And then when I didn't teleport, they got the Baron, one of us died. And we just kind of, there was a lot of sloppiness from us there. And I think that's not what we had practiced a lot. And I feel like there, we could have ended the game like 20 minutes sooner there, I feel like. There was just so much like... We could have ended the game there, could have ended the game there, could have ended the game there, but like we just mistake after mistake after mistake made this game like a 20 minute toss up and it's like, who's going to win? Who's going to throw at Baron? And um, I just think if we would have played that game cleaner, it would have just been like a really quick stomp, I feel. Just with a four, when you get a 4 0 lead and a dragon mm -hmm. like that and a jack starts 2 0, it's pretty hard to lose that advantage. And uh, we, d we did happen to <laughs> somehow lose that advantage, which is really bad by us. And I just think that. If we were a little bit smarter with our ward placement and using our pick potential with Thresh and Elise that game at Baron instead of starting the Baron and throwing at the Baron, we would have had that game, I think, a lot smoother. But I'm glad we won. I just think that we definitely need to clean up our play if we want to be able to take down Cloud9. Yeah, who you guys are actually playing later in the day. So you got another one ready to go. And honestly, your early game is looking very good. The strength of your team as a whole, too. Your, yourself and Shifter joining Dignitas seems like a fantastic thing on paper. How's it been working out in practice for you guys? Um, I agree that our early game is really strong. We've been scrimming some of the top teams and having really good laning results. And again, um, it just comes down to meshing as a team. Whenever you have a new team, it's kind of hard to get used to playing with each other. That's why everybody thinks the older teams are better. They have more experience. They have more knowledge. We've just been a team for two weeks. And I don't like to make any excuses about anything. I'm not saying we're going to get better. But I think there is a lot to improve in terms of... Um, having cleaner plays in our later game and just having a smoother transition. And I think smoothening that transition from early to mid game is really what's going to make us one of the top tier teams. And I think once we can get that down a little bit more, we'll definitely be one of the best teams in the NALCS. All right. Okay, so then speaking about kind of smoothing out some of your plays, we actually have a couple of replays. Uh, traditionally, of course, they are at Baron. If we can pull the first <laughs> one up on the screen. Favorite. I mean, they were the big yeah. fights, right? So uh, I'll walk through this one. I think it's about 25 minutes in, so I think it's the first of three Barons. Uh, All right. Walk us through this fight. Sure. So we start the first Baron I'm pretty sure that we go for. Um, we know that uh, they've got Ori and Twitch, so we don't want to pile into them. Thresh puts up the box because we call to finish the Baron. Um, I'd say that's pretty risky because what happens as a result is we're all stuck in the pit and they have an Orianna and a Twitch. And what happens when they have two hyper carries that are really good at killing people in, in enclosed places is that they die. And what happened, that's what happened there. We just got d demolished by Orianna Twitch AoE. The ball sucks them in, the... the Spray and pray kills everyone, and then good guy Kiwi Kid trying to get me out, but I'm like, okay, I'm dead. I'm just going to kill Altec here. Yeah. And a lot, I did a lot of that that game where it was like trading one for one when they were sending a lot of people at me, and honestly, trades like that aren't worth it because when they're ahead of the game, they're going to look for anything they can get, and wasting their time is better than giving them that kill, and they got a lot of kills like that in that game. Not only for me, from other people on the team as well, but... We need to cut things out like that to have a smoother game. And we knew what we wanted to do with that Baron there, but it just it was extremely poorly executed. Yeah, I mean, you mentioned these are things to improve upon and learn from. And when you kind of watch that clip again, uh, you mentioned it was a very risky play, all of you being in there against the Twitch and Orianna. If you were to do it again and say you were actually making the calls, which I'm not sure exactly how it's still working on Dignitas right now, how would you have done that differently to make it smoother? I just think you don't ever want to start the Baron unless you're certain that it's free. Are you using it... You. The best way to use Baron is as a tool to draw people closer because in League of Legends, the best way to play the game is to force people to come to you and get objectives that you can on your own. So we have a Fed Jax, right? And he can easily outsplit push the Lee in. So we want to use that to our advantage to force them to walk into the pit because Lee's going to be out pressuring. I mean, Jack's going to be out pressuring Lee. Um, the other four can then walk in and control the topside jungle. When you have complete vision control and you have to face check into an Elise Cocoon and a Thresh Hook, Morgana's not going to be able to black shield everything. So you're going to get a pick at some point. When you get that pick is when you actually start going for the Baron. If they come, 
I mean, if they don't come, then that's great. Get a free yeah. Baron. If they do come, then you have to have the have the call to go in at the right time because it's, it depends on the team comp. Um, but if they have an Orion and a Twitch, you don't want to be grouped <laughs> up in the Baron pit. And I think we did a really poor job there of um, being grouped up in the pit a lot of the times. And if we had just cleaned up our Baron play, I think that game would have been 10, 15, even 20 minutes sooner. Yeah, I agree. So then a follow-up question then um, on you know making the right calls, going for the right kind of fights. What is the in-game communication dynamic now with the team? Two new guys in, right? Crumbs used to be the shot caller. What's what's the calls like? Um, I think the calls really differ on the team. Different people make the calls. I definitely communicate a lot, and that's a good thing. But when I'm split pushing a lot, like I was, especially that game on a Jax, like I'm not making as many calls. So my communication is more focused on, OK, I've got vision out bot side. Here's who's bot side. Here's what I'm trying to do right now. I'm not saying, okay, bait the Baron, okay, go on them. So it's kind of like a different dynamic for who we're using. Like when I'm part of the team, I definitely try to like have a bigger voice, but everyone on our team is saying, adding information and making calls. It's not always, oh, Crumbs is a shot caller, oh, Zion's a shot caller. No, it's different people say different things when they think it's right. And that can, I think that's better than having one person um, be the shot caller, but it it's also, there, there's benefits in, um, yeah. It creates a lot of uh, yeah. chaos for one thing. It can, it can create chaos, but if you're really good at using it well and everybody respects everyone's opinion, then you can have a really fluid team. But it really depends on the dynamics of the shot callers and basically just how good the communication of the team is as a whole. Yeah, and unfortunately, we are going to pull up another Baron fight. Just to I maybe talk it. about the communication that happened <laughs> leading up to the Baron fight, because we're okay. all curious. Let's pull this sure. up on the screen. This is the 35-minute Baron fight, Zion. Okay. And oh, with obviously Fog of War toggled, so now you get to see what EG saw, but walk us through this one. Okay, so is this the last Baron or the... This one was at 35 minutes, I believe. Okay, yeah. The this second is... to last Baron that he stole. Yeah, this is the Baron where um, I could have teleported in and we would have gotten it for free, but we made the call for me to not teleport in. That resulted in them and them getting the Baron and then us just being set up to get picked out. Um, we do end up picking Crepo and then I go suicide for the inhibitor, but that was just us making the best out of a bad situation. And when you have an advantage, you don't want to be the ones making bad trades. You want to be the ones making only good trades and not losing anything. So that was, again, just we had poor, um, we just had poor ward coverage and calls later on in that game. But I think we, that can be easily fixed because I think we have the right calls to be made. We were just getting really greedy with trying to make multiple plays happen across the map, and that led to us being a little too quick on the trigger. And I'm kind of glad we got the Baron through out of the way, because yeah. I, 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 don't, I don't want that to happen in our game against Cloud9. It's Absolutely. on cooldown for at least a week. You yeah. couldn't even use it if you wanted to. It's once Dignitas possible. throws up Baron once, it can't happen again for like another another couple weeks at least. Another couple know. weeks. So week That's four is the next Yeah, Baron just like week throw. four will be the next time you see us throw up Baron. <laughs> quote me on that. Okay. And uh, if it happens before that, then shame on... You, you shouldn't have brought CDR. You brought the right mastery page. Yeah, you guys, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so then let's. I, I want to kind of keep talking to you guys about um, sort of your shot calling and whatnot because um, obviously it wasn't the perfect game for you guys. Uh, so Skara being, uh, stepping down from the mid lane, being a coach here, how is he working with the team? Is he helping you guys formulate strategies, how to close out games, uh, improve your communication? What does he do for you guys? Um, yeah, basically Skara, and we also have another new guy, uh, Comely Cast, Drunk Skara, Skara's Alter Ego, if you know who that is, also helping us out, and uh, he's kind of more like the macro guy, and we have also Skara, who's been a pro player. The best kind of person to have um, as your kind of coach is the person who has the most experience. So Skara's a really good person, because good person for the coach role, because he understands the game very well, and he just kind of helps us with everything generally. Like, he's really good at helping Shifter with just, like, the mid lane, like down to the mechanical level about like the matchups mid. And then he's really good like on a more team based, like um, objective based uh, style of the game, just telling us, okay, this is what you should have been doing. This is where you should have been warding. This is what you guys need to do more or less. You know, just kind of helping us with everything. And it's kind of nice to have not only someone who understands the game that well, but also another person who's there to help on like the macro because Skara kind of is like the more of like a micro person for our team, but he also understands the game really well, so he helps us on like the macro level. But we also have another person who helps us on the macro level, so that just helps us have different people who um, focuses, focus on different things that we need to work on. And honestly, when most of the teams in the NALCS have very, very poor macro like play style of the game, they don't really understand this is what we need to do to win and execute it flawlessly. I think Cloud9 is one of the only few teams that their macros like strong enough that they can focus on improving as, you know, their micro. So Scar is not really helpful for the micro aspect. We just need to focus on just macro because our early game's there, you know, our laning's there, but mm -hmm. we need to really improve as a team on what to do next. We've got an advantage. What do you do? How do you win the game? 
And that kind of thing is what it's really nice to have coaches and analysts for because when you have five players on a team and you're living each other, living with each other like every day, like you're gonna have, there's gonna be disagreements, there's gonna be arguments. Players don't see eye to eye on the same thing. And when you have a, co a coach or an analyst that everyone respects, then you can, then you can, everyone can t listen to what he says and take it as truth and be like, yeah, if we all, if. If everyone, it's like shot calling. If everyone sees a call as a good call, or not necessarily a good call, a call that they'll follow, it can make a bad call into a good call. It'll make that mm -hmm. bad Baron into a good Baron if everyone follows through. So if we have like that coach that everyone respects and understands then and follows his viewpoint of how to win the game, then it'll turn into a good viewpoint of winning the game. And I think Scar's, Scar and Comley are really good, um, smart people who understand the game very well. And if we follow the way that um, they want us to play the game, I think we'll become a better team. Obviously, when you have five players on a team, there's already a play style in place, so you can't really, um, you can't really take that play style from them because that's what makes the players who they are, but um, you can kind of help nudge them in the right direction. I think that's what's really great about coaches and analysts. All right. All right. Well, the fine. spirit of Dignitas and the coach threshold, it's nice you get the multiple perspectives look on things, but now, third game of the day you won, fifth game of the day against Cloud9. What do you do in the one hour you have in between games to try and prepare last last second? I think we just really need to look back at the game and be like, all right, guys, we're not throwing at Baron again. We're going to win the game with our early advantage. I think we can get an early advantage against Cloud9. There's, I don't think there's any doubt, but I mean, I, there's some doubt, but I think we have a good chance of getting an early advantage. It's like, mm -hmm. that's great. You got an early advantage against Cloud9. What are you going right. to do from there? And I think that's what we really need to take a look at. And if we can execute that properly, I think we have a good chance. If not, then uh, I think you're going to see what happened last game, except a lot worse. So hopefully we can fix that. All right, well, Zion, thank you very much. Congratulations on your good start to the season. We'll see if you can make that 4-0. Guys, we got a flash away, but after the break, we'll check in with your thoughts on our Twitter question of the day. Then it's on to our fourth match, Team Silla Mid versus Complexity. We'll be right back.